Hello. Um, this year it's Caesar Kinesiology Federation's 30th anniversary and to help mark the occasion we're going to be speaking to some people who uh, were there at the beginning of the Federation, people who've supported it over the years and notable figures from the world of kinesiology. Um, I'm Phil Clubley, I'm the current chair of the Kinesiology Federation and it's my pleasure today to be speaking with Natalie Davenport. Um, Natalie spent many years traveling and gaining a wealth of knowledge and experience which she's been able to share with her students and she's also the founder of Perceptual Bodywork. Good morning Natalie, how are you doing? Hello, how are you doing Phil? I'm very well, thank, thank you. Me. Thanks, yes. So you've been connected with kinesiology for, for quite a long time. Um, what, what's your history with kinesiology? Um, I've lived a, a, a fairly conventional life. Or, or no, I have had a most unconventional life. Um, <laughs> suffice to say, after trying to live normally and after many adventures, I arrived in California. And at that time, I had been born there, but I had never visited it to live in. And I spent nearly three years there. And it was exactly at the time of the start up of Touch for Health. So uh, what I had found in my adventures in life was that I loved anything to do with healing and understanding people and learning to work on myself. And I had offered my body to everybody because I never had any money in my life. So if I wanted to learn something, I'd give my body to somebody. Yes, and that way I felt I had first hand, literally first hand learning from a lot of people. And the, the one thing, and I would try to put into practice what I had learned. And, uh, and I started lots of things like in California, you have to be, um, you have to pass various exams and anatomy and physiology and all that sort of stuff. And I was lined up to be an acupuncturist originally and then dropped out because I liked the body too much. Couldn't bear putting needles into it. So I had at last decided to follow in the footsteps of Ida Rolf, who at that time was the queen of body understanding. And Rolfing, I think, is still one of the great traditions of restructuring a body. Um, but her Trainings were extremely expensive. And the only way I could do that was to sell my little flat in London, mm -hmm. which I did, and bought the money back and uh, was all prepared to finalize my papers to join the college when somebody said to me, you must do this little training we've come across made for you. And I trusted that person. So I did the training and it was touch for health. And I cannot tell you the astonishment I felt. It was like a complete, utter revelation because I'm one of those people who never thinks they're good enough. I, I, I never know if I got the right answer. I'm very unsure of myself. And here is a system where I could get direct feedback from the body as to what it was doing. And it was like, it was complete revelation. My heart sang, my spirit sang, I stopped all my things to get on. <laughs> that, that sounds like a very familiar experience. <laughs> I think I think kinesiology does that, doesn't it? It, it sort of has that that life changing uh, it is moment. Completely life changing. Yes. Experience it to learn it and to do it. So you kind of stumbled on it rather than it being something that you you purposefully went out and sought. Well. During that first training, there was a girl on it, and uh, she was a great teacher to us because uh, I, I, because I had worked a lot with dowsing before I came over to America, and they had never heard of all that sort of stuff. Then, um, I understood that muscle testing was a form of asking the body. So, with her, we created all these techniques where she could ask her body. What was the next step for her to do? What she should take, what she should eat, how she could cope with her emotions. Da, 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 da. And she talked about it at one of the touch of health conferences that we used to have in those days. Um, but it gave me great courage because I showed all of that technique to some of the teachers like um, uh, Gordon Stokes, for example. 
and uh, I never got acknowledged for it, but I think I was like the founder of asking the body questions. Fantastic. Yes. I like to think I was. And I've been fairly fearless. Anyway, so I, I learned, I did uh, two ITWs to John T and I did a third one when I came over to England again. And I studied with everybody I could find out, go and do a course. I did every single training that was happening at the time. I didn't want to miss out on anything. <laughs> <laughs> were, you, were you able to bring um, that knowledge together then to, to form your perceptual body work? Was, was that, well, was that something much that later. Came... Oh, okay. I'm still in the process of learning. And when I got to London, back to London, and I began teaching touch for health, um, in London and also in Europe, in Germany and Denmark and various places. And I, again, always on the look for more information. <laughs> and in London, I stumbled across a man who was a member of the chiropractic, uh, the AK, Applied Kinesiology College. And he, gave me and a friend of mine who was a very good osteopath a complete training in that classical uh, classical kinesiology so it was that, can you imagine being given that by somebody who knew what they were doing on a one-to-one -one basis it took him nearly a year to do it wow yeah i had this fantastic in training and everything i learned i would go and teach partly to find out what I didn't know because it's only when you teach it that you know where you you know where your stumbling blocks are. sometimes <laughs> that's when things start it. getting well, that's popped it. in a row yeah <laughs> so the whole thing was a complete adventure all the time and I just loved it I think that's, that's really anything. coming across is that it, you know it's it's not just something you did, it's something that has completely imbued your life. You know, I think adventure really sums it up. Um, I mean, I mean, that's, it, it's brilliant. What, what kind of made you want to teach then? Was that because you just felt you had so much knowledge that you wanted to share? Well, everything I did, I taught. So in those early days, uh, Brian Butler was before me in England. He was the founder of Touch of Health in England. And his work was, and he was a great teacher, I have to say, really great teacher. And um, I think my, my attitude towards it was different from Brian. He always felt that I was going to be um, uh, somebody buying for the top plate. I'm not interested in all that the man wants. I'm not interested. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to know more and to help more people, <laughs> you know. So come back to your question, which I think is a little bit ahead of what's happening. So where are we? We're in England, traveling in Europe quite a lot. I mean, I've been to teach in Germany, for example, at least 60 times over the wow. last 30 years. And uh, during that time, I also took like a few months off in New Zealand, where I, again, you know, would find kinesiology. You could live off kinesiology. You know, what great gift was that? Now it's also difficult. You have to have this, you have to have that, you have to be something. And uh, I'm so incredibly lucky that I started all my learning at a time and nobody told me what I had to be or what I ought to do. Yeah, yes. with, with it being the, the, the Federation's anniversary, we're just hoping to talk to people who were connected either at the beginning you know, and, yes, and well, instigate. We had been going already for 10 years, about before the Kinesiology Federation was formed. Wow. Yes. Okay. A long, long, long time. And um, the Kines and the Federation was us allowing all these other groups to have a home. Right. So we changed it from the Touch for Health, um, what do we call this, uh, association, into the Kinesiology Federation. Oh, fantastic. And uh, yeah, it was really, really interesting. I had a lovely chat to George Goodhart once because he was very, very upset that uh, we had chosen the word kinesiology. Right. And uh, I, I had a little chat with him. He was a small man. He came up to my nose. One of the 
most beautiful, wonderful men I've ever met in my life. I mean, really fantastic man. And I said to him, George, we have, all of us want to do this work and we need to have a home and we need for it to be respectable and acceptable to everybody. And it all comes from the incredible work that you did all those years ago. I used to go to some of his trainings, you know, <laughs> fantastic. Um, and he listened to me as he was able to do. And then he said, I now understand. And I give you my complete blessing. Amazing. You know? So it's for him, you know, that the Kinesiology Federation actually uh, was okay for us all. You know? that's, that, that's a, an amazing story. I did not know yeah. that. Thank no, you, you know, not, that. don't know lots of stories. <laughs> 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 I mean, most of these things happened, you know, 35 years ago or whatever, you know, long time. Yes, we used to. Yeah, it used to be such fun. And the Touch for Health days, you know, I was forever going over to America to all the conferences and meeting everybody. And it was such a, it was a um, lovely life. One of the things some practitioners find really difficult is, is even describing what kinesiology is, even with years of experience. And yeah. so I was just wondering from your point of view, if you were talking to uh, somebody who'd never heard of kinesiology or somebody who was, uh, you know, maybe interested in um having a session they'd heard of it but weren't really sure what it was how how do you go about describing it do you have a way that kind of keeps it quite simple it's very interesting isn't it? it's a very good question because i like working with men a lot and a lot of kinesiologists i know hate working with men they only like working with women now why is that why is that <laughs> yeah. I, I find men fascinating but one of the things i used to love about men is that i could be very practical so they would say what is kinesiology and I'd say, well, it's acupuncture without needles, yes. And uh, it's chiropractic, but without manipulation, because I'm not entitled to do those things. But the effects are the same, but it has an added dimension, which is that we can find the order in which to do things. Yes. So man likes that. So with men, you know, you can make a goal and you can work towards it and you can get a result. He understands what's happened and he'll come back for more when he needs it. Absolutely. So. Yeah, I, I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> with a woman, it's a little bit unending. And my generation of women were not very sure about themselves. They didn't quite know what they had the right to ask for. Or That's very interesting. Yes. yes. Yeah. So that's changed now, thank heavens. In those days, you know, most of my working life is working with women who are very, very unsure. Deep uh, down. Yes. Their place and how they should be, what they can do, how much self-responsibility they want to, you know, all that sort of stuff. So it's all very interesting indeed. That's fantastic. And a lovely, a lovely description, I think. Yeah, I like that. Um, so with the woman, with both of them, I would say it's also transformative. It is transformative. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, I think that's one of the things again that that, that keeps us so interested in kinesiology is, is seeing transformation. I mean, as practitioners, we've experienced it ourselves. It's it's what made us want to be practitioners. Um, but seeing it in our clients, I guess that's maybe what keeps our passion going you know get our passion for doing it is, is seeing those changes in people and and i think sometimes seeing uh or, or doing something which seems quite small it's you know it's a thought or it's a small change but it can have like an epiphany for somebody and 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 make such a big a big change i wonder from from your point of view um either as, as, as somebody who's experienced kinesiology or, or with people you've worked with, what can you think of one of the most transformative examples you've seen uh, kinesiology do? I remember having somebody who came to me many a time and I said, why are you coming? I'm not managing to resolve your issue. And he had some ghastly illness, which was killing him. And nobody quite knew what it was. And he said, I know you've got the answer. So I said, you mean we've got the answers? Because one of the things I say to people is, if I have not managed to help you within three sessions, I'm not your person. 
that's interesting you know because i don't like looking after people i want people to want to transform so when i heard him say that and he'd been more than three sessions quite a few sessions i said okay let's really get down to the nitty gritties and the one thing we hadn't explored with him was stars was stars in the land that he lived on so i said why don't you go and spend the money and get a really good a radionics practitioner and have your land and your territory dials to find out if there's something there that should be looked after. So he did and he found that the garden sat over an ancient cemetery that nobody knew was there mm -hmm. and that the input of water into his house has passing through it. So they did some of their magic which is a wonderful thing to do and he was instantly better. And he came back to me and said, I told you to find the answer. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a perfect example. Love stories like that, you know. That's fantastic. Yeah, I like that a lot. And um, it's like when you're with somebody, you know, you watch their face, you know, you're watching them, you're with them, you're, you're their witness, so you can yes. really see allow them to see themselves hopefully and they usually comes a point within the talking or the doing where you know something has happened yes I, I mean I always think that's amazing as well you know people say how did you know that and it's like because your body told me it's you know it, it, you, yeah. you have this information and we just have this amazing ability to be able to to tap yeah. into that resource. Um, I, I, um, I know one of the things you, you mentioned um, uh, to me when we were talking earlier was, was being a perfect witness. And again, I, I love the concept of that um, because, because of the way we're working with a body and energy. And I just wonder whether you could maybe um, tell people about what, what being the witness is, either, either in a yeah, session. I mean, I've, uh, I've done, a, I've done lots, of, lots of trainings on it. So it's just to disassociate you, your ego, away from what's happening. And as one of my friends who said, just park yourself in an allotment up here somewhere, you know, so that you're not actually involved at all. You are the witness for somebody to see themselves. So I've got lots of nuggets like that all through my life when I feel weak and disappointed and so some other nugget comes to my <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's perfect because with the 30th anniversary of the Kinesiology yes, Federation, you know. it's our pearl anniversary. And so, you know, we're, we're talking about pearls of wisdom. So these little nuggets are uh, exactly the pearls that we're, um, that we're looking for. You need one of the things to train yourself to do. It's not you doing to your essence, meeting the essence of the other person. Yes. And when that happens, that's where healing takes place. Fantastic. It's as simple as that. So most people don't want to be completely well. I don't know why that should be. So one has to be very patient with people. <laughs> Not force it. You can't, yes. No, you can't force it. It's like an invitation to change. Because you're stepping from something known into something unknown. And yes. that's very scary for a lot of people. So it's just like handing your hand out somebody who's crossing over a stone over a river just to help them get to the other side. Yeah. You haven't done anything. You've just given the hand a step. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've done something. <laughs> well, no, they were lucky enough to find you at that moment. And you yes. were lucky enough to have them to, you know, be a partner for a moment. Yeah. And, and, I, and I think, um, you know, I often think, um, a practitioner is is as good as their clients you know it's like when when people say oh you know you're a great practitioner or you've done a great job and you think but you're a great client who presented what yes. you needed and and were open and yeah. and, and trusting and I think you know that that is a large part of it as well oh completely so if you can give them that sensation that they can be like that which sounds yes. like you can then you're going to be a good practitioner of course well, I, what I love is that you've given us loads of little nuggets, but I'm going to just see whether I can extract one more from you. Is there, a, a, you know, another pearl of wisdom, a little something that that you can leave our, our viewers with that um, they can either do for themselves or if they're a practitioner, that they can do for their client, anything like that? 
Well, I think that as uh, explaining to you and Bettina before about in my own life, I knew too much. Mm. You know, my head was too full of statistics and figures and things to do. And it was, I was getting, I was in complete overload. It's happened to a lot of my friends in kinesiology. And um, all this visiting to Germany that I'd done, nice thing about the German people when you work with them is they do what you tell them to do. The English never do, but the Germans are amazing. <laughs> and, and one of the things they kept saying to me year after year after year was, well, what about you? What is your work? Because I was always teaching classical kinesiology or, you know, like the old stuff. Um, and I said, yes, what about me? And uh, it took me two or four years to realize that I could let it all go. Mm. And I gave away nearly all my wonderful books to various people who wanted them and uh, wrote out perceptual body work, which is based on the little training that Sheldon Gill did after Touch for Health years ago, just as a framework. But basically it says to people, who are you? You know, what is the relationship you have with this being? And, that, and so it's a way of trying to perceive what is required. Yes. Then the thing then is to find out the order. So another little goodie is the Buddhist wheel. You know, so if you take the Buddhist wheel um, you can come in onto anybody from any aspect of their life, okay? It doesn't have to be at a certain place. But the best is to come at a, at a place which the body is receptive to. So in kinesiology, we had this broad spectrum. We have all the body knowledge. Mm -hmm. We have lots of mind knowledge, lots of emotional stuff. We have various healing techniques that people picked up. Which one of those is the priority? So the priority mode uh, is a very useful tip. Yes. This is where I start. And then when you've finished, is there anything else that needs doing? And more often than not, the body will say, no, I'm satisfied, thank you. It's done, it's showing off, of, I've got it. <laughs> <laughs> And occasionally it says, thank you. And you give it a pause and then it will say, and, and something else might turn up. But it's very simple. Yes. Whereas you would do a routine without, without that. You know, you can go on and on and on and on and on and people get exhausted receiving yeah. it from what's happened. Now, nothing like a touch of health balance, by the way. It's still uh, the best basic balance you can do for everybody. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, that's been brilliant. Oh, thank you ever so much that's for talking on that today. one. That, that has been, that has been keeping really it simple. Cool. Yes, keeping it simple, I think, is key. Absolutely. For everybody, because we all get in burnout, we all get disappointed in ourselves. And the thing is, it's nothing to do with us. It's how have we been in relation with that person to help them? Yes. You know, so it's a, a great honour that we're in this position. Yes, you asked me before, what's your pearl of wisdom from your years of experience? And I think I've answered that. Yes. Listen well, then the simpler the work you do, the more profound the change made. Yeah, yeah. Like that. Thank you ever so much for, um, for giving me some of your time today and some of your insights. It's been really, really good talking to you, Natalie. Thank you both very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 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 <laughs>